Welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today we are ecstatic to have with us for the guest hosted series on IdeaGen TV, Microsoft's Gretchen O'Hara, Vice President for AI and Sustainability Strategy US. Gretchen, welcome. Thank you, George. As always, so excited to be here and be a part of IdeaGen TV. Um, so thank you very much. We have an exciting segment coming up, George. Um, we're really excited about this and celebrating um, our empowering women and girls. I have two incredible guests that I want to share uh, with the audience today um, that have been accomplished women trailblazers um, in their own right, specifically as we think about really women and girls in STEM and really helping empower others, um, women and girls in the industry overall to be able to, to take advantage of opportunities uh, as we see in the next generation. And so today, I'd love to introduce my two guests. I have Laura Adele. She's our chief data scientist here for our team at Microsoft. And Laura's experience here um, is in AI or artificial intelligence spans over 13, 14 years now, and she was named Medium's top 20 most influential people in data science for her work portfolio. Her tireless efforts mentoring girls in STEM, leading Digi Girls, Women in Tech. Laura's also been known as a club DJ in South Miami, <laughs> uh, uh, South Beach, Miami. I'm excited to learn a little bit more about that. Um, among many of her talents and claim to fame. And so, Laura, it's really great to see you. Thank you. Welcome. Absolutely. Thank you, Gretchen, for inviting me to be here. I also would like to introduce Don James. Don James recently joined our Microsoft team as the director of our U.S. Uh, sustainability and environmental scientists group. And within this role, she supports a whole range of initiatives that um, is sustainability, environmental uh, issues, sciences, and innovation. Don has over 23 years of industry experience and geoscientist and a systems leader. And in her spare time, she loves spending time with her daughters. Thanks, Don, so much for joining us as well. Um, Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. Well, we're going to have some fun, I promise you. Are you ready yeah. to get started? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we have the powerhouse here. So here we go. Let me start first question here for Laura, for you. Okay. Um, you, tr you currently serve as the, the data scientist, chief data scientist for, for Microsoft US and AI sustainability team. Can you share more to this audience? What does that mean and what does that job entail? Sure. Uh, first of all, it entails for me a lot of fun. I geek out on numbers and math. It is my it is my sweet spot of happiness. But in the day to day role, it entails leading a team of other data scientists, really seeing them um, come to fruition around what they can bring when you when you think about things like artificial intelligence and really measuring in the business and helping them predict future outcomes that can help them drive even new ideas, new revenue streams forward. So there's this whole gamut ranging from you know, things that are prediction based to all the way to um, artificial intelligence robotics that can really cover the gamut of where data science fits in. And um, for me, it's just a pleasure to do all of it. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, next question here goes to Don. So Don, you recently joined Microsoft US and AI sustainability team as the director of US sustainability and environmental scientists. We're very excited to have you on board, already doing some incredible mm -hmm. things for the market and our customers. Can you share a little bit to this audience what that means as being part of that remit? Yeah, absolutely. And and thank you so much for having me. And it's, it's a pleasure to join the team. Um, so first and foremost, I care about the environment. I'm, I'm a geoscientist and I'm an environmental scientist. Um, so caring about the environment lends itself to exactly what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I look at what Microsoft has uh, is doing as a corporation, what, we're, what our corporate sustainability goals are around energy, carbon, waste, waste uh, water, and our ecosystems. And I help to drive these data-driven solutions to achieve more within our customer space. So I'm helping to leverage the power of Microsoft within industry. So I come from the oil and gas and energy industry. So I help to execute our strategy and to help our customers to achieve their business outcomes. So I sit right at the confluence between technology and industry. 
Really exciting. And um, we are seeing more and more of the conversation not happening just in the public sector, but to your mm -hmm. point, where you are is a is a high priority around our corporate customers at really have the conversation at the board level. So really helping lead the way, Don. It's really exciting. Um, so let's switch gears for a second um, and go back, Laura, maybe to you for a second. Okay. Um, we know, and I've talked a lot about um, uh, this specifically in my talk tracks about girls in STEM. So science, technology, engineering, math, there's a sizable percentage drop of these girls that uh, will drop out before we, quite frankly, even get STEM into high school. Certainly another big dropout when you go into college and then actually into career. So from your perspective, what kept you in STEM and maybe some words of wisdom for the audience here? Sure. And my journey's uh, a little different than some. Um, I'm dyslexic. And part of uh, the, the challenge when you're dyslexic when you're young is that the schools don't really know or didn't know when I was young how to really deal with you. They put a label on you and placed you somewhere. And that didn't come with a lot of help to help me grow and learn. And so outside of school, I had to go to many, many different therapists from speech therapy to those that are specialized in dyslexia to really learn tools to help me um, be successful in my, in my education. And what's funny is that I spent every afternoon doing that and I hated it. I hated it. And I, I mean, I had no life. It was just, I had to do these tools like for hours. And yet I fast forward to where we are today. And it's the whole reason why I believe I'm successful as a data scientist. Um, they taught me how to think out of the box. They taught me to be able to pivot and think on my toes and then how to read people. Because a lot of dyslexia is really trying to understand and listen and lean in to, to make sure that you understand it. And by doing that now in my career, it gives me that advantage because I, I lean in, I listen, I, I'm curious to no end. And so all those times people are like, stop asking me why. You know, now at least I get to ask that why as part of my job. And so when I look at girls in STEM today, it's such a passion for me to tell them that story because, you know, oftentimes times folks that I mentor um, all the way down into you know middle school which I, um, I currently mentor you will say to me I, I can't do this and they really sort, sort of hone that imposter syndrome already and if I can do nothing else in my life it's going to be to teach that voice that girl that no you have a voice and it matters and it doesn't matter if you're in a room full of you know Ivy League you know and very intelligent people because that's just reality you yourself can own that space if you're there there's a reason why you're there and speak up and talk and I think if more girls understood that STEM is a path for them that can teach them so many more things than just maybe they think, you know, science and math, I, I like it, but I can't do that for a career. No, I mean, these things can bridge out to some amazing careers and opportunities. And I certainly am not, you know, in a box in terms of my role as a data scientist. And so neither should anybody else be. And so if I could do nothing else, it would be to impart that wisdom, own your voice and, and continue to help mentor and foster girls into the workplace that we see today. That is so powerful, Laura. Mm -hmm. um, just that aspect of empowering to believe. And, you know, again, to your point, getting rid of imposter syndrome, supporting and really recognizing you might be the only one in the room. You may not have additional mentors or peers that look right. or feel, you know, like you, but you can do it if you believe in yourself. And um, mm -hmm. we need to believe in our young girls. So that's really a um, great, great story. Um, so maybe similar question, Don, for you. Um, what was your journey in STEM and, and um, any advice to the audience on how to continue to keep or shorten up um, the reduce the dropout rates? Yeah, absolutely. So for me and myself and my journey, um, you know, I always kind of go back to understanding who I was as a core, at the core when I was younger. So I think about um, having just a, a deep intellectual curiosity, um, really delving into what makes things tick. Um, I've always, always had a deep love of nature and understanding why things are the way they are, and then really trying to dive into you know, um, the history, the history of, of molecules and the history of uh, sediments as they move through a cycle. Um, and one of the things that I've learned um, from going from that curiosity as a child through the educational system is that same drive that, that of when I was a kid, that, that curiosity, that joy of learning, that carried me through in a lot of difficult situations, um, either academically or with work, um, that, that that was something that I was always curious about. It helped me to pivot in my career um, and, you know, and, and also come up with new ideas, things that people hadn't thought of before. And so when I talk to young people, when I mentor, um, I also do um, uh, reverse mentorship 
and I get a lot out of that as well. So mm -hmm. what I learn from young people is in, in addition to what it is that I can impart to them is really get, getting down to the core of who you are and making sure that you never put that second. You make sure that every time that you make a, a decision, an important decision in your life, making sure that it's leading you toward something that makes you happy, something that brings you joy, whatever that is. And so that to me is the, what I find helps through difficult situations as Laura was talking about with imposter syndrome or you know, feeling like you're the only person in the room to have this particular type of voice or to speak differently than other people speak in a room. To have that confidence is to know who you are and to know that you deserve to be where you are. Um, and what I found in my life is that once you know who you are, then other people accept you as well. That's really, really well said. And, um, you know, I think it's just so important for our girls to be fearless, um, you know, to have that understanding and then certainly get the get the support as you talked about. What are you doing, Don, today as you think about some of the blockers that are they're certainly still in place uh, for, for girls in STEM? What are things with your experience that you have now that you're doing to help remove some of those blockers? Yeah, so I mean, it's it's definitely one of those things that 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 it's a difficult road, right? And it's not to be um, to underestimate that the the challenges that people face um, when you're facing, say, microaggressions, it, it hurts and it's difficult. Um, but one of the things that that I make sure that I do, as far as you know, just as an individual, whether or not I'm mentoring or partaking in reverse mentorship, I, I always make sure that I'm speaking in front of groups of people that look like me and people that don't look like me so that they understand the potential of their coworkers or their classmates, right? Um, and then one of the things that I also do is to try to leverage whatever platform that I have um, to speak to those that are um, disadvantaged, being able to leverage you know, the power of Microsoft and in these spaces. So as we talked about before, my deep passion for environmental sustainability, um, geoscience, I also like to bring up um, uh, topics of environmental injustice or topics that pertain to civil rights and how Microsoft as a company and how me and my role can help, right? Um, whether or not we're talking about, um, you know, looking at startups with minority owned businesses or looking at HBCUs or me just going in and, and judging a competition or something like that. And going back to my former um, colleges and universities that I participate, that I, that I went to school at and talking to young students that look like me and also, like I mentioned, the ones that don't look like me so that we all see that representation matters and that, um, you know, not so much that if you just believe it, that you can achieve it, but if you really do dig down deep and make sure that you are in alignment with what you believe and that your work and the things that you're doing um, every day is in alignment with what you believe, it's, it's very powerful. And so whenever I have a platform, wherever it is that I go, I make sure that I bring others with me. Right. Um, so that's one of the things that I make sure I do. That the in, incredible, Bo both of you. I mean, just just thinking about your leadership, how you're giving back. We everything from sort of how we tap into accessibility to um, some of the work around um, you know justice reform. Uh, you know, just amazing, both of you as leaders here at Microsoft. So I appreciate you guys sharing your story. Um, so let me, you know, one thing first, let me go back now uh, to, to Laura for a second. Um, first of all, I have to congratulate you on your analytics podcast was picked up by women in tech on Spotify. You'll have to check out Laura Dell's um, a podcast. It's quite exceptional. I had an opportunity to be a guest actually with Laura. We still owe the TikTok we to do. the audience. We will definitely, <laughs> we will definitely do that. I had a great time really talking about very similar um, things around inspiration and, and, you know, sort of how really to um, inspire, uh, you know, guests as specifically around um, our women uh, and, and girls in tech. And yeah. so, um, you know, what was the inspiration for you of this podcast? Maybe you can sure. just share with the audience. Yeah. 
So uh, when I was uh, a child, I would put on these plays and perform. And I, I had this radio show that I would do. And uh, it's with a cardboard box and a can and a string. I'm probably dating myself. You know, I could have used an X cell phone if I had one, but I didn't. So it was can and string. And I just remembered enjoying just talking. I mean, I'm an only child. And so I didn't have a lot of, um, you know, household playmates. Um, and my mom was a single mom. So she worked a, a tremendous amount of hours. And so I had a lot of um, time to myself. But what that taught me was, is that uh, A, I can entertain myself. Uh, but B, that, you know, I, I can there's this medium by which I felt I could reach out even when I was very young. And so analytics was created around this idea uh, of analytics. I mean, it, it is my passion, but to show people that are either new in career or want to getting into a career that's similar that you don't have to fit a mold to be able to become a data scientist. You know, there is this image that, you know, I had, I mean, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty feminine girly. I like stuff that's sparkly. And, you know, I, I, so I, you know, if there was a mold that someone had preconceived when I come in and tell them there's no mold and break that, and sort of the proof is in the pudding, it's very powerful for young girls to realize that they don't have to change who they are to fit a role, even if they're interested in it. And most recently, I think for me, analytics is really meant for those new and career folks who've now gone through a journey, similar to one of my mentees recently who just graduated, who I've been mentoring since she was in the eighth grade. She's now graduated college and, and started her first career in tech, which is amazing. Um, and I show she said, you know, what I didn't realize back then was that you are you. If you embody yourself for all the quirkiness and, and kookiness that you are, Laura, but that told me that I can have a voice and be myself. So I don't have to fit with my mom and dad, you know, no knocking her mom and dad, of course, but, you know, they had wanted her to fit this, you know, accountant CPA mold, you know, and, and they wanted her to intern wearing, you know, suits that they had given her. And it wasn't her at all. And she felt very uncomfortable, but she did it to make them happy. And I remember telling her when she was going through the struggles, you know, remember that you need to make yourself happy first and foremost. I mean, if your plane is going down, you need to put that oxygen mask on yourself first. And, you know, in helping her sort of have these metaphors and experiences and just sort of living that myself, um, you know, she, she went to her first day in the new job wearing, you know, this tremendously awesome pink shirt, you know, black suit. But it was just like she put her little moments of herself on it. And I, I remember just sitting back as she told me the story and just smiling because it's so rewarding, A, to see somebody that, you know, wanted to take a, a different path than her parents wanted her to take going into now technology specifically um, as, a, as an engineer and, and just seeing her own who she is. And so for me, Analytics is meant to be that podcast for those early in career folks um, to learn, you know, how to combat imposter syndrome. And Gretchen, you were a brilliant guest. Um, you came on and you really shared with the listeners how somebody can go from, you know, their beginning of their career all the way to being a VP at Microsoft and still embody this fun, you know, youthful, enthusiastic mentality. And so if anything, that is where Analytics, you know, was sourced in Gen from um, for my listeners. That's that's fantastic. I mean, it just continues to, I think, for our listeners, realize that empowerment message is so important, especially to young girls and Absolutely. authenticity, as you talked about, and that mm -hmm. you, as you go in from not only your elementary, um, you know, high school graduate, early in career, you need to be your authentic self and you shouldn't um, try and cover or be afraid for that. It's actually, we need to celebrate each other's um, really uniquenesses and, and different Absolutely. Really, you know, great, great podcast. So I encourage listeners to, to, to tune into that on Spotify. Um, so we're going to go into a lightning round um, really quickly, um, really quick. So Don and Laura, um, just quickly, if you had one piece of advice that you would love to leave the audience here um, as it relates to your experience um, on the topic of empowering women and girls what, and immersiveness, um, obviously, in STEM, what would it be? One piece of advice. Don, you want to go ahead? Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, um, to me, it's, it's about uh, your mindset, your mind. Uh, life changes when your mind changes. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That is. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, I think it's it's owning who you are and living your authentic self, uh, no, no matter what that is, be who you are. It will show through so much more than being somebody else. Oh, my gosh. That's just amazing. I really could be talking with you all day. <laughs> um, maybe we can even get you all back in a, in a round two. But I really want to thank you, Laura Dawn, for your time, for your words of wisdom, uh, for the insights for this audience. And I really hope that uh, you all learned as much as I did from these two incredible leaders here at Microsoft. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, enjoy the day. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks.